On the 17th of January, 2013, the mine countermeasure ship USS Guardian ran aground on the northwestern tip of the Tubataha Reef in the Sulu Sea. Immediate actions were taken. The USNS Bowditch, the Tung Trabajador, and the submarine and special warfare support vessel Sea Champion were sent to the grounding site. The crew of the USS Guardian made several attempts to back off of the reef, but were unsuccessful. Due to significant hull damage, progressive flooding, and loss of power, the commanding officer gave the order to evacuate USS Guardian on January 18th. All 79 crew members were evacuated to USNS Bowditch and the Sea Champion. On the 19th of January, by direction of the U.S. Navy Supervisor of Salvage, a Smith Salvage team flew out on a chartered plane from Singapore to Porto Princesa to plan the extraction of the USS Guardian. The next day, more U.S. Navy vessels and the VOS Apollo Tuck were mobilized to site for assistance and survey. Dragged by strong currents and trade winds from the north, the USS Guardian was turned 90 degrees and broached on the reef. The battering waves then pushed the vessel approximately 20 meters further onto the reef. Continuous pounding on the coral caused severe damage to the bottom and the structure of the ship. The hull was breached in several places, causing significant ingress of water. Engine room machineries were shifted out of position and pushed upwards. The ship's shafts and part of the rudders became embedded in the sand. Both propellers were heavily damaged with the starboard propeller broken off and lying beside the shaft. The impact of the waves on the port side caused the glass-reinforced plastic outer shell to come off in small pieces, which were then scattered onto the reef on the lee side of the vessel. In December 1993, the UNESCO declared the Tubataha Reefs National Park a World Heritage Site. The coral reef consists of a 100-meter perpendicular wall, lagoons, and two coral islands. Because of the reef's protected status, strict criteria were set for the removal of the wreck. There was to be no pollution by oil or floating debris, and no damage to the coral growing on the reef's steep drop-off. Following the arrival of the VOS Apollo on the 18th of January, preparations began for discharging oil from the tanks and skimming oil from flooded machinery rooms of the USS Guardian. Several ribs in a small landing craft carried loose equipment from the ship to the USS Mustin, the VOS Apollo, the Trabazador, and the USNS Salvor. Crane barge Smith Borneo, mobilized to extract the USS Guardian from the reef, arrived on site February 6th, together with tugs Ark and Tide and Intrepid. However, Smith Borneo was unable to set her mooring legs adjacent to the wreck due to the steep reef face. As anchoring close to the reef proved impossible, the dynamic position crane barge Jaskin 25 was mobilized, as she would be able to stay near the Guardian without the need for anchoring. The Jaskin 25 arrived on site February 19th. Adverse weather conditions prevented the start of the removal operations on board the USS Guardian until the 22nd of February. During the subsequent days, all loose items were removed from deck and stored in an empty container hanging from the Jaskin 25 crane and resting against the starboard shell. Dismantling commenced on the 25th of February. The winch and storage reel were lifted from the stern deck by the Jaskin 25. The next two days, the sonar, funnel, main mast, and last remaining loose items were removed from the Guardian and stored on deck of the Jaskin 25. On the 28th, all removed items were lifted from the Jaskin 25 onto the Ark and Tide. The Ark and Tide, functioning as transfer vessel, transported all parts to the S-7000 barge moored alongside the Smith Borneo. Smith Borneo's crane then transferred all parts to the S-7000.
Upon having transported the funnel, winches, and mast, preparations began for cutting and removing the Guardian superstructure. The level two accommodation block was lifted on the 2nd of March. It was then transferred from the deck of the Jaskin 25 to the Arkan Tide and transported to the S7000 barge. Due to weather conditions, it was five days later when the stern section of Level 1 was lifted from the Guardian and transferred to the S7000 barge. On the 8th of March, the remaining part of Level 1 was removed. Preparations for lifting the hull began on the 11th of March. For safe removal, the hull was cut into four sections to be lifted separately. To reduce weight, the machineries from the machinery rooms were disconnected and removed. Precise holes were cut into the ship's hull to place the rigging needed for stable lifting of the sections. Internal corridors were also cut out to establish easier access for the dissection of the hull. Continuous skimming of oil in the flooded spaces again prevented spilling during removal. The VOS Hercules arrived on site to collect the mast, reel, sonar winch, and scrap-filled containers to clear the deck of the S7000 barge. After removing the last machineries, everything was sent to begin the removal of the hull. Extra measures were taken to prevent pollution by oil and floating debris during the lift. Down current, a U-shaped oil boom was set up between a Navy rib and the Intrepid tug. On the 26th of March, the bow section of the Guardian was lifted off the reef by Jaskin 25 and transported to the S7000 barge. The auxiliary machine room section was removed on the 27th, followed by the main machinery room section on the 29th and the stern on the 30th of March. To clear the reef of the remaining debris without damaging the coral, special baskets with adjustable legs were designed. Dropped onto the reefs by the crane of the Jaskin 25, these baskets were then filled with debris collected by Navy divers. On the 3rd of April 2013, the reef was cleared. The sections, the superstructure, and other parts of the Guardian were taken to Sasebo, Japan.